we're going to be dealing with the, using the if statement to create logical groups. We'll be combining the if statement with what's called and logic. We'll be using the or logic statement. And we'll be creating data using multiple categories. Now, don't let this scare you. It's not going to be scary at all. It's going to be very logical. I, I like to use the, the analogy of, of balancing a checkbook. The skills that you need to do what we're going to do take no more mathematical ability than to balance a checkbook. Now, I know that isn't everybody's favorite activity, but really what we're going to be doing is no more intellectually rigorous than that, but it requires a, a, a certain structure in terms of the way you actually do this. Oh, there will be several upcoming webinars where we're going to be dealing with other topics. One topic will be transforming data into actionable information when we're talking about pivot tables and so forth. And we'll also do a, we'll have a seminar in June on reconciling multiple data sources. So some of the questions that you may have on validation, uh, data validation, may be addressed in some of these other webinars. And I'll certainly let you know if that is in fact the case. I'd like to now go to our first example. And you'll notice that along the bottom, you're going to see 15 different examples. We're going to go through all 15 of these, assuming the time allows us to. Let's begin at the beginning. Well, the spreadsheet that you see in front of us has two examples. How to put data in, like this, the, top, the data that you see at the top, and not like what you see in the middle. It's either red or orange, depending upon your screen resolution. The most important thing to remember when you're setting up a spreadsheet that you're going to be using for data validation, or really any pivot tables, or any kind of real serious data analysis, is the following. No blank columns, no blank rows. You will hear me say that multiple times during the course of today's webinar. You'll notice here, if you look at the, the data that I put here, what do I have? I have this dreaded missing column right in the middle. The user, for whatever reason, has entered a missing column, and that's going to have a ter terrible effect when he or she tries to go and sort their data, to put, on, put in validation tables, to do a lot of different things. So I want you, you'll hear me say it multiple times, when we're putting data together in a spreadsheet, no blank columns, no blank rows. Inevitably, people will end up putting in blank columns or blank rows, and then when they go to do their data analysis, a good portion of their data will be excluded. And they'll wonder why. Why did that happen? How come I don't see all the cases? I expected 100 cases, and I only see 50. I expected 1,000, and I only see 500. So one of the things that I want to just emphasize with you is that we're, we need to make sure that we've got no blank columns, no blank rows. You want your data to look like what you see at the top, not what you see in the, in the middle of the, the screen. I'm now going to go on to the, uh, the, the worksheet at the bottom labeled data. And you see what I've done here. I've taken some, I've made up some data here that's, that documents uh, certain aspects of the patient's care. You'll be seeing variations on this data throughout today's uh, seminar. The patient last name, first name, which I really probably didn't need, but I put that there because sometimes people just feel a little bit more comfortable seeing tying a, 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 a name to a, um, a case. Uh, we've got the patient's age here. We'll be talking about age calculations. I put in, put in the patient's medical record number, their date of admission, so on, the date of surgery, and so forth. And over here, let's say that this, this group of patients are patients that are, have all have, had cardio arterial bypass grafting surgery, uh, open heart surgery for those of you that may not be familiar. I could have used any CPT code. I could have used any description. This is the data that, you'll, that we'll be working with uh, throughout today, some variations on this. Now, what do you notice about the data that you see in front of me, in front of you? What do you notice about that? Well, what you notice is no blank columns, no blank rows. Look again. Notice when I've structured my data here, you don't see any blank columns, any blank rows. Very, very important when you're putting data together that's going to be analyzed. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I, I want to make it look nice. I want to make it look clean. I want to make it look a little bit more presentable. My response to that is there's always opportunity at the end, after you've done your data analysis, after you've done all, all your hard work, all the heavy lifting, 
there's plenty of time later to make it pretty. So when it goes to the board or it goes to the CFO or it goes to the CEO or whoever is the audience, you'll have an opportunity to make it pretty. But while we're doing our data analysis, no blank columns, no blank rows. All right, let's go beyond this. Let's jump down and get into the meat of data validation. Well, here we have a subset of the data that you've just been looking at. And what have I got here? The patient's name, date of birth, medical record, so forth. And I also have over here in column J, I've, I've, got, I've allocated a column where we're going to put the surgeon's name. And what I want to do here is I want to al allow only the following surgeons, only, only the surgeons that you see in column L will be permitted to be in this table. I don't, if, if there is another name in here, I don't want to allow it. Now, how do we do that? It, well, it's very simple. I've created my master list here. I might have downloaded a doctor master. I might have gotten it from uh, the, the medical staff office. It doesn't really matter where I got it. But I want to make sure that the surgeons that you see there are the only surgeons that we're going to allow here. I hope you're all with me. I'm going to now very slowly click on a couple of commands. As I click on, as I click on them, I'll repeat them so that you're able to keep up with, with, with me. Okay, I, what I simply do is I highlight the range of data that I want to validate against. I then go up to the column, the command at the very top, data. I click on data. I then click on, oh yes, the data validation key, that, that, that icon, that icon that you probably have wondered about but have never maybe gone into. We're going to click on data validation, and then I'm going to click on data validation again one more time. And look what we see. We see three tabs. We're going to be working through all three of these tabs. You'll be seeing this a lot. By the time we get done, I promise you'll be sick of looking at these three tabs. Now here we go. Look what happens. Look at the default setting. The default setting for my surgeons is what? Any value. Remember, I said earlier, the great thing about Excel is it allows you to put in anything. The bad thing is it allows you to put in anything. What we're going to do is we are going to now change this from any value to we are going to define it as a list. We are going to specify that the, the data you see in red, the surgeon's names, will be the only names that will be allowable in this section. I click on list. It then asks me, what is the source of my data? That is to say, what it, where is my master file? Well, I click on this little red arrow that you see on the right here, and I highlight the names of the doctors, the surgeons, who I am going to be using as my validation tool. You'll notice that the data validation bar will appear here, and it tells me that my data, validate, my data will be validated against the contents of L2 through L15. Once I've done that, I simply close my data validation. So I'm, not, I'm only going to allow in column J the content that you see in column L. Well, it's not enough simply to indicate what I want to validate against. I need to give my user some instruction. So now I'm going to click on input message. I'm going to put in where it says input message. I'm going to give my user a message that says, enter surgeon name. I don't need to be elaborate. I don't need to be fancy. You can put a title here if you'd like to. I typically don't use the title simply because it, it, it gets a little bit busy in terms of the actual appearance. I'm going to give the instruction for entering the surgeon name, and then what do we want to do if the, patient, if the person entering the data makes a mistake? We want to click on error alert, and we want to stop them. I'm actually able to do several things. I'm going to show you several different options here, but we're going to stop them. We're going to, we're going to stop them cold in their tracks, and we're going to say, if they enter a name that is not on that list, we're going to say, invalid entry, try again. And then I click OK. And lo and behold, look what happens. I now go to column J. I now see a down arrow key, a drop down key, uh, a drop down arrow to the right of column J. I click my dro drop down arrow, and lo and behold, look what comes up. I have now validated which, using this master list in column L, the data that will be allowed in column J. So I say Dr. Blake is my first one, Dr. Brown is my next patient, Dr. Forrest is my third, 
so on and so forth. I'm going to go in and let's say Dr. Forrest had several patients. And now I decide, hmm, I want to enter another patient. I want to, uh, another doctor. I now want to uh, enter Dr. Smalls, S-M-A-L-L-S, Mary. I hit enter, invalid entry, try again. If I click retry and I click enter again, it will stop me. It will not allow me to enter Dr. Smalls. Why will it not allow me to enter Dr. Smalls? Because Dr. Smalls does not appear in column L. She is not in the master list. So I've limited the contents of all of column J to what you see in column L. I've validated column J against column L. Now some of you may be thinking, well, I don't want the user to necessarily see column L. And you can do that. You can hide column L. You could even put column L on another spreadsheet. But for our purposes today, I want to make sure that everybody stays with us. I want you to be able to see exactly what we're doing. I can now continue on and, and enter the different doctors who are associated with each case. And again, if I try to put somebody in, I put it, try to put in Mary Smalls again, it's going to tell me invalid. That's the first level of data validation, and I hope that you, some of you will begin using this. It's, it's, as I said earlier, it's one of the most underutilized aspects of, of Microsoft Excel. I'm now going to go on to an example that allows us to check against the length of a medical record number. I've, I've gone down to exercise four, worksheet four down below, medical record number, and you see very similar data to, the, to what we've seen before. Okay, we've got the patient's name, last name, first name, date of birth, so on and so forth. And I've been entering the medical record number. The user goes in and is given an instruction to enter a medical record number, and it must be six digits in length. How did I set that up? I simply clicked on data, validation, and I've gone to my settings, and look what I've done here. I've said settings, text length, must be between the length of six, the minimum of six, and a maximum. I'm talking about the physical length of that particular field. So now, if I go down to line 15, I now put in for the medical record number, one, two, three, four, five. I hit enter, invalid entry. Please enter six digits. The system will not allow me to enter a medical record number unless it conforms to the convention that this hospital uses, which is six digits. I can retry. I now can put in one, two, three, four, five, six. And now it, excuse me, it allows me to continue. 